Welcome back to another episode of The Chompley Show. This is episode 10, and it's a very special episode. You know, 10 episodes of this. You know, this journey has been very interesting. I've, you know, had to deal with time issues. You may have noticed the episodes have been very late recently, but that will be fixed uh, as I'm learning how to edit, right? I've been on that grind, bro. You already know. Today's guest was a very interesting one. His name is Anthony Roman, and he just left, unfortunately, but he is an entrepreneur and nothing short of the word, to be honest. His life story is pretty interesting. Well, not really life story, more like life events, things like getting arrested and the same day that he got a shipment for his uh, merch company, his his, uh, clothing brand. And overall, talked about his so far success on sports betting, winning nearly 20000 in the month of December. You know, problems like getting set up. And overall, very interesting episode, very interesting guy. I'm so grateful that I had him on. Thank you so much to all those who watch this show. Production value will go up way higher in the future this will be the first episode i edit myself which i'm very excited for and thank you so much for everyone watching i appreciate it whether it be two minutes or the whole episode i genuinely appreciate it thank you so much hit me up if you want to be on the show that's like the best way to to get on here bro because some people are so interesting please let me know thank you so much have a good day I don't think all the time, but he just said, like, oh, what the fuck is going on in there? <laughs> <laughs> the cops ended up pulling up. They approached us with the guns in our face. They couldn't get out because of how drunk they were, you know? Like, <laughs> Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Welcome to our episode number 10, very special, guest, Anthony Roman. Thank you for having me. Nice meeting you today. Yeah, it's the uh, first time I've, well, not first time I've seen you in person. Probably the first time you ever thought of me. I've seen you before at a uh, poly last right. year. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I think I've seen you around school too. Yeah, yeah. But this is the, like literally the first yeah, time we've first ever time we, interacted. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons I started this yeah. uh, show was because there's so many people I want right. to like one-on-one with, right? right? Instead oh, of nice. just like seeing them and that's it. All right. Yeah, I wanted to talk uh, to you. So nice. I have... I'm back to this. I have a little paper I got printed out today. Oh, nice. So I got your graphic printed and then also questions. Okay. So, you own Gelato Madness? Yes, me and my friend. All right. Yeah. You too? Yeah, me and my friend Joshua. Shout out Joshua. When did you guys start this? Uh, it's a long, long story. Uh, I it's it. a pretty long story. Um, and... By the way, is there any specific things that you're not allowed to talk about? No, I, oh. unless like you like it's horrible politics. Oh, talking, okay, talking, okay, yeah. right on, right on. All right, so it all started like around eleventh grade, mm-hmm. and at the time, um, I've always had a entrepreneur kind of mindset, always mm-hmm. trying to like sell something or just trying to hustle on something. So at the time, I was selling stizzies. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 And it's not my most, the most thing I'm most proud of, but, you know, it was what it was. And it it was kind of what inspired, like, the whole hustle in the beginning. And I was really close with a friend named Christian. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you know, we would always hang out. We would always smoke together, you know, Mm -hmm. do our thing. And one time we ended up getting on on a bench at a park in Sun Valley Park. We're right there. And we're blazing one up. And then we're... (laughs) We're thinking at the time we were, I was already selling stizzies and he was like selling like push carts or something like that, mm-hmm. and I remember we were just thinking I was like we should start an Instagram page, and we should sell both of our products together on that page and kind of uh-huh. just share our customers and kind of yeah. like expand it from there, and we're thinking of names and then one of our favorite strains at the time was gelato, so it was like we were smoking on it again. Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, so. We were just thinking something with the name Gelato in it, and it just popped up in his in his in his head. Madness. Yeah. So Madness. Christian Christian De Leon. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, he's the one that came up with the a name. So after after that, 
um, I kind of went on and he never uh, kind of continued on with it. But I went and I created an Instagram page. I kinda, that's when I started uh, getting on. Well, at first I started getting on Canva. That's kind of when my like graphic designer thing kind of mm-hmm. started going in. Mm-hmm. Like started getting into graphic design a bit because I would go on Canva. I would decide my logos or like my menu. I would like, custom yeah. my menu, and uh, from there, uh, I started seeing it more like a brand. I stopped seeing it more like selling Stizzy, selling pods. I started seeing I could do something else with his name. Bigger so that's vision. yeah, bigger vision. Yeah. I kind of just wanted to stop being known also for just selling Stizzy. CEO. Know? Yeah, okay. I don't want to. I didn't want to be known as that, <laughs> but no, don't mind calling me that yeah, at all, yeah, though, because yeah, I don't mind at all. <laughs> okay. But um, continuing forward, then it turned into a clothing brand, mm. and we just continued on from there. And and one thing before starting my clothing brand, I I was already selling clothes, but I wasn't selling it for my own brand. I was selling like aftermarket, like fake Nike shirts oh. or like fake Adidas shirts. Uh-huh. So I was selling those before I got into the clothing. So I already had kind of experience with shipping out and, oh, okay. and yeah, stuff like good, that. Yeah. So um, I, like I said, I always had uh, something kind of pushing forward. And then after that, um, that's how we came to Gelato Menace. Yeah. yeah. Then me and Joshua went in on it together and we just started creating videos, creating content. And really? Yeah. Wow, I've never seen those. Yeah. Well, we have the photo shoots, but we oh. we deleted a lot of videos too. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, a lot okay. of because before we started doing photo shoots and stuff like that, we would kind of do just content on our phone or mm. just you know. Do you do you still have it or is it just gone forever? Uh, I think I might still have it, but it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be hard, hard to find. It. Yeah. yeah, hard to find it. Yeah. So this was over like two years or more. Yeah, I think we started it around, I say, two thousand twenty one, two thousand twenty one. So almost three. Yeah, That's almost three years, but yeah. not the clothing. The clothing started okay. around last year. Like That's okay. when I really started pushing yeah. the clothing, like around my 12th grade year. That's when we started pushing the clothing around that year, too. Around last year, I stopped kind of selling as well, too, because mm. I kind of wanted to get away. Yeah. I had a lot of experiences that just weren't uh-huh. good going, being around that and just doing those things. Can you talk about those experiences? Uh, Yeah, there's a lot of specific events, uh, like me going to jail or getting a gun pointed in my head or... <laughs> Or, you know, being set up and such things like that. But um, I feel like it's crazy because I've never been, like, really, like, in the streets. I've never been a gang member, you know? Uh, yeah. So for me, to those things happen to me was kind of crazy for me. Because it was, like, really yeah. shocking for me because I was like, damn, I'm actually in that position. Uh-huh. Like, so um, I think one of the toughest ones was going to jail. Mm. I was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. And I remember uh, we are after the stizzies. Uh, I was selling so much stizzies that I kind of started expanding it. So I went with my friend Joshua and I told him, you can go and you can invest into the full grams. Because there's half grams and full grams, right? So I, I was selling the half grams. That's what most I was selling. I was telling him, you could invest in the full grams and then just have so many customers. And then I could go sell them and you just get your cut. And then after that, we expanded into shrooms. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure you've heard of them, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, so... Um, once we started selling shrooms, I think I didn't, I, I was really kind of skeptical about getting into it because I knew it's, it's actually like illegal, like mm. selling stizzies. Yeah. I could carry it cause I have a wreck. Once I'm 18, uh-huh. I had a wreck. So I can kind of drive around with weed on me. It's not a problem. Mm. But once you had shrooms, it was kind of more like a problem. Yeah. So I remember we drove to Santa Cruz to see some friends because they wanted, uh, some, they wanted some stizzies and they wanted, uh, some shrooms. I think they just wanted shrooms, mm-hmm. but we pulled up, and these are friends that I've known for a while, since, like, ninth grade, so it was, like, we were just blinking. It, we it wasn't really just to, like, sell. It was more just to, like, hang out. Yeah, just chill, chill. Chill, because yeah. my friend, uh, he, Adam, he went to Santa Clarita uh, High School over there, so we would go see him sometimes. We would go mm-hmm. hang out with him over there sometimes and kick it near his house. So this was literally outside his house, and we're hanging out. I remember we were smoking up, and then out of nowhere, not to make, there wasn't a lot of other details going on, but not to make the story so long, the cops ended up pulling up. And they approach us so bad, like they approach us with the guns in our face, like with the lights, and we really thought we were like getting ran up on because of the way they pulled up on us. Uh-huh. It just felt like it was mad scary, you know. Yeah. And I remember one of them told me, "Oh, put, uh, put your hands on the hood, put your hands on the hood." So I went and put my hands on my hood. They searched uh, Jose's car because uh, Jose was driving his truck, and um, 
we went from there. They found a they 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 had a tank. And by the way, I don't I don't do Nas, but they had a tank on them. Okay. And they was doing it. There was they had balloons on them. So my friend Adam ended up going in with me actually that day. And they searched my car and they ended up taking me in for the shrooms because they mm. found shrooms in my car. And when you get in there, you go in this little room. And you go into like a little waiting, like a waiting cell where you're able to kind of make your calls. You're not in fully yet, but as soon as you go in there, the first thing you do is you get your fingerprints taken, then you get your mugshot taken, and that's like that. That feels like so like like you just failed in life, you know? Yeah. Like when you're getting a, a mugshot taken, <laughs> you feel like damn, you just failed in life. Uh-huh. And quick interesting fact: that day that I got arrested, it was the first day that I had gotten like just earlier that day, I just had picked up. Uh, the gelato man is hoodie teddy bear hoodies. oh really so i just i oh. came from my manufacturer to pick them up <laughs> then i wasn't even like planning like to get myself in any of that i just literally went to go see my friends mm. Cuyuta. we get there i get arrested that same night <laughs> and then i go there and i'm 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 scared like honestly i'm scared because um they t- they started i was in the back of the cop car and they came up to me and they started reading me my rights. So I knew I was arrested. You know, I knew at that point I was, <laughs> it was done for me. Uh-huh. So, so they pull up. I pull up to the cell. It kind of made me feel better. The f- I mean, not that I wanted my friend to be in there, but it kind of made me feel this better is, the fact that I was going in with my yeah, friend yeah. and he was across me in the waiting cell. You're not alone. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't alone. Uh-huh. So you get there. Um, you take your mugshot taken. You feel so disappointed in yourself, whatever. <laughs> you go in the waiting cell. I'm in the waiting cell, and I'm like, damn, I'm really in here. I'm processing everything. You still don't process really every. I mean, exactly, like even me, like I couldn't process it because it's just like what I did. I didn't feel like I did something wrong to be in that place, but I know I wasn't in the right either mm-hmm. to like not be in there either. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I just yeah. feel like I wasn't doing the most for me to uh-huh. be in, in that place that day. So I just felt like, damn, uh, I made my call. The first person I made the call to was uh, my uncle because I... I didn't want my grandma to know, cause my I'm I'm a grandma's boy, so okay. So if my grandma find out, she she gonna kill me or she gonna she gonna be so hurt, you know. Uh-huh. So she feel bad. Yeah. yeah, I didn't want my grandma to find out. I didn't want my mom to find out. So I called my uncle, but I guess he ended up telling telling my mom about my grandma anyways. And um, it's crazy, cause um a lot of people don't think it's really tough in there. Like you think, oh, it's just whatever, but it is tough in there. Like um after you get your car, whatever, they don't let you call nobody anymore. You're there, and I asked how long I was gonna be in there, and they lied to me. They said I was only gonna be there like two hours. I was there for like twelve hours, and um, I remember from the waiting cell, they took me into an actual cell, and they were gonna put me in a cell with somebody, like with somebody inside, like a like a what do you call them? A cellmate. There you go. Yeah, something. A cellmate, and um, they didn't. She said I think she knew it was my first time, so she was nice to the the mm-hmm. lady officer. Oh, okay. She was nice, and she was like, I'm gonna put you somewhere safer. And she put me somewhere alone. And I remember, I was like, damn, I went to sleep. They gave me a blanket. When you get the blankets, the blankets are, like, pissed on. Like, they're Really? Like, yeah, and Absolutely. it's cold in there, so you have no choice <laughs> but to cover yourself in those pissed blankets. So cover yourself, cover myself. I'm look- I'm trying to get comfortable in there. The lights are always on, so they never really turn off. So it's mm-hmm. like you can't, you don't know when it's night. You don't know when it's day. Um, they don't have a clock or something? They don't. Just, nothing, just, nothing, nothing, nothing. And this was overnight? Nothing. And Yeah, this was overnight. Yeah. This was, I went in like around 11 and I got oh. out the next day like at 12, oh, okay. 12 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So um, one thing they do is they take off your your strings off your hoodie. I have my hoodie. They take it off just for any, like if you try to hurt yourself or anything. And then I remember just looking to my right on the wall and then there's blood stains on the wall. So it just feels very uncomfortable like being in there and then not knowing how what time is it. No one comes and answers your question. And this was the most trippiest part of like being in there. I remember there's a there's a button inside the cell that says if you feel like harming yourself or killing yourself, or press this button. Mm-hmm. And I pressed it not because I had any thoughts of harming myself or anything. It's just simply I wanted to know what time it was. Uh-huh. And I, I was crazy for knowing what time <laughs> it was. Like I just really wanted to know what time it was. So I remember pressing it and then nobody came through. Like nobody came. Th- so it's like, imagine there's someone actually in there trying to hurt themselves. That's like, crazy. That's just fucked up, you know? So, so no one came ever? Like, not even just like... They came in like two hours later, I think. <laughs> but I was already sleeping. I was sleeping and they woke me up and I was like, am I almost out of here? And then it was just like, hang tight, you know? And didn't get it out to the next day. And then uh-huh. me and my friend ended up actually getting out at the same time, so... Mm. 
got in there same time, got out the same time. Things that I'm not really proud of, but I feel like they're things that actually made me who I am today yeah. and like built my character today and like feeling like I can face anything, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so uh, how did the cops find you guys? Okay. So we we're hanging out and we we're smoking a blunt and there was a guy rotating with his truck. Oh. Um, and we kept looking at him, but we just kept looking because he kept rotating with his truck. But then eventually he parked his truck all the way down from where we were on the street and he started walking past us. And once we started walking past us, we realized it was just a regular guy, like, with his hat. He looked like, you know, like a trucker, just uh-huh. a regular guy that likes trucks, you know? Was he, like, white? Uh, he, was, he was Hispanic. Oh, Hispanic. Okay. But, yeah, I can imagine, yeah. But I just don't understand why he was rotating, and then he got off the truck, he came off. So once we came off, we did, like, a little, like, uh, we kind of, like, made fun of him. We just laughed, you know, while he walked by. Because, you know, we just didn't know why he was rolling around, so mm. he thought we were a threat or something. I don't know what he thought, but we were just kids just hanging out. Mm-hmm. And, um... I guess he's the one that called the cops, I think. I, we came to the conclusion that he was the one that called the cops. Yeah, I'm assuming yeah. so, too, yeah. So, yeah. That's what we assumed, you know? At the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, how else, though? Yeah. Yeah, so he just <laughs> probably got mad or something. And he laughs. That's, yeah. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. So, like, that day... So that was probably, like, that day started good for you because of the yeah, gelato. Like, I got and then, the next, yeah. then the next day I got off, I went, I got out, I got in my car... And I had the hoodies in the back. <laughs> and I was driving home, and I was like, it's time to do this. It's time to get it. It's time to grind. You know? Um, uh-huh. Yeah, man. It's just I'm glad that it was just a phase, and I kind of didn't get too, like, into it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's some people that really get into deep. it, dip, deep into it. But I never had that mindset, really. I just kind of wanted to make extra money, money. on the side. Mm-hmm. That's all it really was, you it know? It was a hustle. Yeah, just yeah, a hustle yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was the the first drop of Gelato Madness, right? Gelato Madness. Nah, uh, our first drop um, was the cube one. No, it was there was one before that, but it just wasn't never like released on on the website. So I guess oh. you could say yeah. I guess you could say the first two official drops were the Teddy Bear and the and the cube one. Uh-huh. But before that, we had dropped a little sample. Oh. It was just a the original, it was like a little mimic, it was just like something off. Uh, it was it was off. How'd you how'd you sell it? Like school or um, friends? Friends mostly, and then online, mm. on Shopify, you know. Mm. Yeah, that's how we started off. Um, then, what's it called? Moving in after that, we just started. Uh, we started continuing to get more drops in, but we just learned. We we learned a lot throughout the way, and we've actually had a lot of fails throughout the way. But it's normal, you know, when yeah, start when starting something off. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it takes time too. Yeah, a it lot. takes a lot yeah. of time. So, and by the way, I want to give you props for how well you set up your podcast, I appreciate man. It, bro. Like, I, you, you set this up so well, man. Like, thank you for like it's, starting podcast is just set up very, very professionally. Yeah, man, bro. it's also like a huge yeah, thanks to Caesar. Like yeah. that, uh, his company right there. I really want him to to take it like higher up. Higher up. I don't know if you know on the newest episodes it's it's like he puts it on the like the intro. It says mock digital. He has a lot of potential, dude. He uh works a lot in real estate. Like he records oh, nice. it with that with that camera. Oh nice. So like yeah. he's trusting me a lot by having that thing there. It's yeah. <laughs> so it's a huge thanks to him, bro. Yeah, I mean I'm also kinda like worried because I know that like it's a lot of error. Right. But I feel like so far I haven't had too many like like massive Fails. Fails, yeah. yeah. But I know that's part of the experience, so right. it's kind of like I'm expecting it, right. but I'm not just like I'm just not sure when. I it mean, comes if right. if things are going good, just keep just keep, keep that keep, flowing, yeah, keep, keep that yeah, keep yeah, that yeah, energy yeah, yeah. flowing, like keep things going good, because yeah, I, I feel like a lot of us sometimes it's just the reason we f- the not the reason we fail, but I feel like a lot of times the things that just stops us is just the feel of failure, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, literally, yeah. you know, but failing, I feel like it's just it's normal, you know? It's yeah. Really, it's actually a good thing, you know, mm. when you have those L's because you you're going to learn and you're going to mm. come back better, you know? Exactly, yeah. And so I also saw uh, while looking through your account, you have yeah. a lot of, um, like, side things. Side All right, hustles. so is your top priority gelato? Madness? Gelato madness. Okay, so in the beginning, it was my top priority, and it still is one of my priorities. I still want to grow the brand, mm-hmm. but it's more something that I want to take time with. Like, it doesn't matter if it takes me six years, seven six, years, even yeah. ten years, you know, maybe. Mm. So it's something that I'm going to always invest in, even if it doesn't give me the return of profit, you know, the return of investment, you know, even if I don't get it, I'm going to still continue to grow until the day it does, you know, until the day that it is growing. Um, 
because a lot of, a lot of things right now my main priority or the thing I guess that you can say has made me the most is uh sports betting which is yeah, something I've very seen. very new to me but it has blessed me a lot mm-hmm. it has changed everything I've for noticed. me within the past three months to to where I was pr- three months ago it has changed everything for me but um it's still still my baby right here you know gelato uh-huh. madness yeah, gel- it, it's gelato madness uh-huh. party you know we uh-huh. threw the, you know we did so many things with the brand you know yeah so. it's that's sick it, it's closed right now is this the first time you guys have ever like uh, no, we've done that a couple times okay. yeah and that's to that's to um rethink of all the ideas rethink mm-hmm. of the, the mistakes that we have done mm. and then just come back because we're still very new mm-hmm. we have such a very little audience so for us it's not that our little audience doesn't matter it's just that we're trying to, since we're still very new and building up, I feel like right now is the perfect time to kind of make the arrangements that we need to make yeah. before we get to an audience, for, a then, certain audience, and then we can't do anything about uh-huh, it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's another uh, brand that I came out with, a uh, little Stoner's Heart. Yeah, I, I Second, saw So it's kind of like a, a co-brand. So Gelato Madness, when we started it, it, put it in a vision, it's more like a colorful brand, more like a, a graphic, like, more just colorful and mm. like you can't uh, how do I say this if I were to compare it I guess you could say Jalal Madness is kind of like cookies it's kind of like loud in colors mm-hmm. and Stoner's Heart is more like essentials where it's kind of just uh, Chilo-y. simple yeah. like simple designs and like it little, doesn't like show the it doesn't that, doesn't right? yeah, yeah, pop yeah, up yeah, so yeah. bright you know what I mean so yeah, that's yeah. that was Stoner's Heart for me yeah. okay yeah. and so when did you when did you start Stoner's Heart uh, about a couple of months ago okay yeah it was ha- just it was just an idea because there's certain things that we can't do with the name Gelato Madness that we are going to be able to do with Stoner's Heart. Like what? Like, for example, certain... We can't go and we can't get into more deep into fashion and put Gelato Madness. Not because there might be any rules in the name. It's just more because how we established the brand already. Like mm-hmm. how I explained. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. It just wouldn't match. It just wouldn't whole, match with the whole name uh, and yeah, the whole vibe. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. there's just, you know... Uh huh. Yeah. So your your sports betting, yeah. If if you follow, like if if anyone follows him, you kind of know. Uh, you you're really deep into that. I feel like. What would you, would you say? Shout you're out, deep into? Sh- shout out, Gold Sports. Gold Sports. Gold Sports is uh, the channel I joined three months ago. It's a Telegram, and um, in the beginning I joined it, and the first month on October I made five thousand, and the first month. I just couldn't believe it. I thought it was most like a one-time thing. But the first thing I did, because um, they were offering uh, courses on how to choose your own picks, read line, uh, reading lines, knowledge, so many different things, so many different things um, that they were teaching. And I just went and I purchased all of them. I just went. I used the same money that I had, and I just went and purchased that. I was so interested from the beginning. Damn, I was able to make 5000 How can I do this on my own without needing their help? Mm-hmm. So I went and they were out. They were offering courses. I just took advantage. And the one month of November, I didn't make as much. I only made 700 So I was like, damn, it's it's not consistent. But uh-huh. um, maybe, you know, it's not, you know, it's not something consistent for me. But then um, I feel like even my grandparents kind of s- spoke fear into me, you know. Because I, when I won five grand, I went to my family and I was like, oh, then I won five grand, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. I was sports betting, you know. Uh-huh. So my grandparents kind of told me, like, yeah, save the money, slow down, don't keep going. So it kind of uh, brought fear into me. So I feel like that's why I did um, low in November. Poorly, yeah. Yeah, and I got, we had just spoke. I feel like reason for failure is just f- fear, you know, fear mm-hmm. of failing, you know, yeah. fear of failing. And um, going into December, I went in with a lot more confidence. And then in November, I kind of started my free Telegram um, where I dropped kind of some of my picks in there for people that want to follow and stuff like that. Uh, I've done some pretty cool stuff in there. I have actually did on December... When we made uh, like over 17k, I that has dropped everything on my free Telegram. So any so anybody that would have trailed me that whole week could have made the same amount of money. Yeah. So like, how much did you put in to receive 17k back, like in total? I didn't. I never bet in more than 400 dollars. Okay. So. Wow. So, how many bets was it though in total? It was a couple. I mean, the whole week. Must have been like. 35 or like 20 something like that mm. but um it just depends you know because the reason december was so good is because i was hitting parlays back to back the whole week straight 
Mm. Like there wasn't no, like the whole week I was literally hitting a parlay like every day. So that's yeah. What are the best like what what sport do you put the most into? Basketball, uh, basketball, NBA, uh, football. I mean, there's I want to say it, just it's every sport, tennis, hockey. It just keeps going. It's everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not not like ice skating or shit. Like, yeah, or like no. <laughs> none of that. But <laughs> what what website do you use to? Um, it's called Bovada. But Bo- what's it called Bo- Bovada. Bovada. Yeah, B O V A D A. Bovada. Yeah. I've never heard. Of, I've only heard of like. I think eight. it's actually the only sports book that you can use to bet on games here in the in California. Because oh, we, yeah. we're not able to use FanDuel. We're not able to... I mean, we could use stuff like Price Picks, uh, I think DraftKings, but just... I think that's just player props, like, just mm-hmm. for to bet on players. Mm-hmm. But to bet on games, I think Bovada is the only one that we're able to use. Legally? Legally, yeah. Why, though? Why are they... I am not sure, to be honest. Um, I think California is kind of very new to, like, le- legalizing uh, sports betting, sports but betting. it's legalized, so uh, it's not a problem. A lot of uh, sports betting was actually banned, I think, nationally before 2018. Yeah. I think it's very new, all of yeah, it. Yeah, all, li- all being legal. That's why it has grown so much. And honestly, I do realize like being in this industry i have realized that i'm in an industry where a lot of people have lost money lose their yeah, all, all their money yeah. all their money that's lose everything yeah. but one thing that i would uh, recommend to anybody anybody getting into sports betting is do not get into sports betting if you don't know how to uh, manage your money if you don't know how to grab information from someone that knows more than you because that's the only way grabbing information from someone that knows more than you and know that you're getting information from someone that actually mm. knows more that's mm. not just like Fate, like random scammers, yeah. random scammer trying to sell you random yeah, picks. So that's why like I said, yeah. literally, shout out Gold Sports because they literally put legit. me on. They literally put me on to this, you know. How, how do you decide which ones are like legit and which ones aren't? Because I uh, feel like there's so I, many. Like, honestly, yeah, I, I, I don't believe in luck. I don't, but I guess you could say I was. You just direct, happened to. It happened jump, to be yeah. in the in the right path, and um, I bumped into. I was already following him for a while. His name is uh Go Vic. He actually uh. Before that, he was dropping courses on how to grow your clothing brand. I never joined joined that course, but I would just follow him and follow on the things he would post mm-hmm. to grow clothing brand and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Since at the time, that was kind of what I was doing. Yeah. And I, I feel like um, uh, following him and following all these successful people have also gave me the the courage to start all these new things and stuff like that. Because you think about it, like, if all these people could do it, why can't you, you know? Exactly. Like, why yeah, are you not able to do it? You know what I'm saying? So it's like you shouldn't set yourself limits, you know? Wow. I, I feel like... A lot of people go on Instagram and you know how this whole thing of like people saying, oh, they don't want to be on Instagram or something because people are they high. feel like you're comparing yourself. But I feel like instead of comparing yourself, you should just get motivation Yeah. from these things that you're seeing because all they're showing you is that it's possible. You know? Yeah, that's something important. Like looking at all these like big people at one point they were the same as you right and they just yeah, right. went down the right path yeah, they went and down you the could right. get that like that's achievable yeah i feel like you shouldn't put your like a barrier between you and a successful dude right. you should just yeah keep exactly going exactly you, you just keep that. going yeah, so yeah, you yeah. just work exactly where you want to be uh-huh. and i feel like also like for me and things might have just changed for me like about three months ago but i have been failing for years 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 like since i was 13 you know i started making music it didn't go i, I didn't become a rapper you know but mm. i did it anyways you know what i mean yeah uh i got into the clothing selling aftermarket shirts or fake shirts you know i made i made some good money at the time but it just wasn't where i wanted to be it wasn't the career that i wanted you know mm. i felt at that too there was a point where i even got into drop shipping i was uh drop yeah. shipping like uh i think electric lint removers and stuff like mm. that didn't didn't get a single sale felt at that too that you know? market is really uh, i got into gelato madness I didn't make the money that I made, but I did get, you know, the vision that I did mm. want, you know. So at least I, I succeeded in that. So keep going forward. Tried out sports betting. That's something finally hit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just like keep keep going and thing. keep going, keep yeah. going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, and that's it. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Like how many what percent of businesses fail? Is it like ninety or 80? around like that, around there. It's yeah. a high percentage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, way high. So gelato madness overall. But I, I, I'm a correct. I, I feel like out of those ninety percent, it wasn't failure. I feel like it just they just stopped. Uh, you know, you I don't, they I, gave up. I feel like most of most of the cases is just because they gave up. Yeah, I know? noticed that it's a lot. Not because things. they, you know, they had actually something wrong. Because you know, I feel like there's a lot of things that work now. You know, so mm-hmm. anything you know with enough time. Yeah. yeah, with enough time. Yeah, if you work at KFC for fifty years, you get a million. <laughs> <laughs> You can keep going, bro. Yeah. No, um, but 
<laughs> that's not there though. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, that's true though because uh, there was this one kid. I haven't seen him around school, but um, he's he's nice. His name is Chavez, or I think that's his last name. I don't know, but um, he had like a good like he was he made. Like I guess it was like baking. He he had a good cheesecake. Okay. It was delicious. Okay. And um at the school he started it like a month before the school year ended. Okay. And then the school year ended and he just never he never started it up yeah. again. I feel up. like if he continued it would have because he was gone. getting sales. Nice. I remember. I was paying it was over. Does he still go to does he still go to Bali? That I I haven't seen him around. Oh, okay. But that's cause I haven't there are some people that I haven't seen around ever since the school changed. Because, like, there's, like, a lot, like, there's new places, and they just go there, and I don't go there. So, yeah, but um, I remember I was paying, like, $5 for a slice of cheesecake. <laughs> he ma- must have been making profit. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe it. And speaking of profit, though, for, um, have you lost money on Gelato Madness in total? Yeah, we've lost money before, and we've made money. You no, know, So, it's, like, back and forth. Uh, but I mostly lost money. Mm. Yeah. Mostly lost money. Yeah. So, like, in total? <sighs> No, that's a good question. I've lost track. I, we didn't, we, we didn't mm. keep kind of track because, like I said, there was a lot of times where we failed at things and we just didn't keep track with inventory and things. That, so we're just like, on to the next. On to, you know what I mean? So, yeah. But we did, honestly, with their first drop, first ever drop, we actually did decent on that drop because we didn't, we were able to, one thing that I always wanted to, you know, because obviously being an entrepreneur, one of the best things, I mean, starting entrepreneur, you know, one of the best things you want to do is just learn how to strategize, resource, and use as less money as possible, but be able to still uh, create your vision. You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, I after searching and searching for good manufacturers, we were, I was actually able to find a manufacturer that wanted to work with me and was able to let me put in a sample order of not that many. So, let me uh, give you an example. When you're getting into clothing, especially right now with the manufacturers, most of these manufacturers that are brand that are you're brand new to them that you're barely a new brand approaching a new manufacturer you know new consumer uh, a new consumer exactly they're gonna ask you for a minimum and most of the time the minimum is twenty four and the twenty four is gonna run you around some depending on the manufacturer sometimes maybe six hundred or four hundred for that that whole set and then for it to start up you know you know you when you're starting up you know you don't have that demand yeah so you know you're not gonna sell that so. I mean, I'm not saying that. I mean, actually, take that back. But you got what I'm saying. You're yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Have the mentality. That have the mentality. You're gonna to, win, but you know, realistically, you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, you gotta yeah, be realistic, yeah, yeah, and, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, I got a manufacturer that was just gave me twelve. So when we got when we got the first drop, we dropped it for the first time. We actually sold out everything. So we uh, picked up again. We sold everything too. So I think with the the one that did good was the was the teddy bear hoodie. Mm-hmm. We kept we kept we kept uh, selling out and selling it. So that's how I heard of it. Yeah. 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 We sold out like three times, three drops. But you're still investing in, you're still investing in your softwares. You're still investing in uh, content. You know, you're still investing in your time and what you're, you know, with going and creating your videos. You know what I'm saying? So at the end, it kind of just, at some point, it balanced out. At some point, we lost. So I guess to give you a specific number, I, I wouldn't be able to. Okay. Yeah. What were those videos um, like? like? What were they about? Cause just promoting the them. just promoting the brand like um uh, you ever seen those uh, transition videos those walking transition videos where someone's like walking and they're just like uh, every transition they're like in a new in a new Wait, uh, i think i've seen uh the gelato madness one then of what well, we deleted it because now we merch. just have photos right now but uh-huh. back then yeah that's what we, when it was like when we were just starting off we just had uh, nothing but like home home based yeah. content yeah, you know? I, I've seen uh, the one I like was the photo shoot. Well, okay, so you have a photo shoot with like um, a bunch of people on the rooftop. Our rooftop, yeah, that yeah. was that was an exciting, an mm-hmm. exciting photo shoot. Did yeah. you pay uh, some of those people to be there? Uh, some people were paid. Most of the people weren't paid. Okay, yeah, most you of the people reached out paid. to them because yeah. I saw this. Wa- there was some one girl uh-huh. who, um, <laughs> like, I remember I, I went to her account because of that, and she was like, I for- I think it said mod. Like, she just like took photos. <laughs> I was like, how'd you find her? Like, oh, okay. I thought you, I thought you're talking about another girl, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Okay, it's, it's okay. just uh, thinking about some okay. stuff thing, but um. Well, the girl you're talking about is actually just a homie sister. Oh, okay. Uh, she's like, she looks like a like a magazine or like she's like, uh-huh. yeah. she looks like she's in magazines, right? Or like yeah. a reporter or something. Oh, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's uh, the homie's brother. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then what about wh- what were you thinking about? <laughs> no, 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 no. Nah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Um, so, how many drops have you had? Um, just three. Just three. So, just are three. you including the um the one like the, the, the first one? The mm, yeah, the first. The first one? Oh no 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 no! no. Okay. I'm not including the first okay. one. So four if you're including the first first one, the okay. first the first piece. I so it's the the bear, the huh? cube, yeah. and then I don't know the third one. And we'll purchase it March 22nd, by the way. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll just put this up, like, yeah. post-edit. <laughs> I, I made, this is a Google Doc. I went to UPS to print this out today. I was, oh, wait, nice. So, so this uh, how is... How, uh, actually, how did, yeah, how did you get your this? Is it just, like, an old, old uh, post that happened? Oh, my. Um, the, so, I, I, I typed this out, because, like, that's, I've been starting to do this. And then I went to your Instagram. Yeah. I just cut this out and then I put it on the Google Doc and then I sent it to UPS. Oh, okay, okay. And then I picked it up today. Oh, nice. Yeah, sir. yeah. Oh, so you, you want to yeah, yeah, work well, for that? Yeah, bro, for that that, after school today, I was like busy, dude. Um, What's it called? I went to... So, I, I, I'm trying to focus more on the gym now because, like, I used to go, like, twice a week but I just feel like that's not enough sometimes. So, because of the podcast, ever since right. I started it, it's just, you know, right. time, right? So this time I was like, I have to go. Uh, so instead of going to, do you know Speakeasy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So instead of going there with my mom, I was like, I'm going to just use the one uh, in the school. Because with the new buildings, there's a, there's a nice gym. Like, it's mm-hmm. nice. It has nice machines. It has yeah. weights and all that. Do you guys have a sauna on there? A uh, sauna? Yeah. No, I don't think so. No? Maybe. Oh. I, actually, no. Yeah, there's a recovery room, but I think that's only for oh, sports okay. teams. Uh, but I went there. I had a good session. And then I left. And it was <laughs> I was in shorts. And it was, like, kind of <laughs> drizzling. And so then I went, and then I was uh, I told my dad, oh, I'm going to go. And so I went, and then he he uh, told me to pick up pizza. Um, and then so I was just, like, there for, like, 30 minutes, and then I came here, and then I showered, and then I was in the shower when he came, Caesar. And so then I had to, like, rush out, and um, I started recording. So I was, like, it's, a, it's one of those rare days where I didn't really have, like, chill time. But I kind of like that, though. I feel like sometimes when, I, when I'm just sitting there, like, on TikTok, I kind of, like... I could be doing something more. Right. That's why I picked up uh, but, editing. Yeah, so. but I feel like it just happens to all of us. Though. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. And uh, I, I had someone ask me uh, a question for their. It was just like for a debate for the college or something like that. And it was like asking, is social media bad? And I feel like it's a good debate because I feel like yeah, it is bad. How much time you sometimes you spend on it scrolling and just looking at nonsense, but it can actually really be really good because, um, you can pick up ideas from from there oh, really good ideas say, like yeah, a lot of great ideas so i feel like for me social media has just been on the positive side because it just has put me on to new things you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I, was, I was gonna say that too how um i used to not like it because i was like oh i'm just because i was consuming without producing but now i'm consuming these ideas and then kind of like reiterating them and putting them out again right it's just that you know you have to make the best out of out of things yeah right. uh but you also have like a, a bunch of other year here. I wrote this. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see with the the light, but if I do this, it's easier. Innovation Media Agency. Okay. What I looked that up because I I've never heard of that before, and Google kind of gave me like a weird answer. I still don't fully know what it is. So like, what is that? Okay, so with the media agency, I have a a lot of my grandparents and my parents, like my family, they're all business owners. So. Mm-hmm. Them being all business owners, uh, for me being one of the youngest ones, not the youngest one, I have younger cousins, but me being, you know, very young and also wanting to get into business, I just see it as opportunities to be able to, I could be able to grow their businesses. So a media agency, uh, for me, that that I haven't put as much effort as I have, as I, as I should into the media agency, but on the side is one thing that I do. Um, it's uh, try to close deals, try to close jobs. Um like my grandma has a cleaning company, so I'm always looking for new jobs, mm-hmm. and I'm honestly very always very busy, so I'm always trying to look for people that can go out to get the jobs as well. And obviously, it's a well paid depending on how what type of jobs you get. Uh, my grandma offers forty percent per contract, so if I get like a job that's like five thousand dollars a month, I get a two thousand dollar cut from just mm. the contract. So it's wow. a it's really good because you're not really it's not like a business where you have to really invest. You just have to work. You just have yeah. to send the emails. Yeah, you just have yeah, to go yeah. out door yeah, to door. Yeah, you just have to talk to people. And yeah. yeah, so you that's could. what innovation media agency is. Just mm. Closing deals, closing jobs. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, do you currently only do it for family members? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm only doing it for my for, oh. for my grandma. Yeah. But if if someone else reached out to you, would you do it? Yeah, yeah. I uh, actually I'm actually uh I haven't closed a, a job for him yet, but I'm actually am working with uh a, a, a mom, one of my mom's friends, and he uh he creates websites, but. I feel like now that that business is kind of going down, like creating websites mm-hmm. for other people because it's, you know, so much. People could do it. So much the yeah. own website yeah. automated, you know, so it's just like, I feel like it's yeah. not a good business, but he has asked me to, you know, try mm-hmm. to help him get some people, you know. But yeah. There are a lot of businesses that just like don't really work that well now. Yeah. I think people are just becoming more independent. Right. But you, you then could think outside the box, like you could create a website that lets people make their own websites. Right. And well, like what Shopify does for for, for people for stores, yeah, that's uh, that's it's really amazing. Good, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it helps. It helps everyone. I wonder if they, it took people's jobs, but it's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, that's just how that's just how that's just America how works, capitalism yeah. works, bro. Yeah, I mean, yeah. people have to win. So that's the insurance broking. Yeah, it's my mom's business, and right after high school, uh, well, before high school, uh, I was working regular jobs like. I was working at uh, Papa John's before Papa John's. I was working. Well, after Papa John's, my last my last uh, fast food place that I worked uh, was Baja Fresh. Baja Fresh? You've never heard of Baja Fresh? No. Search it up. <laughs> I don't really heed, like, search it up here. Let me look up. Baja Fresh? Yeah. I know Some Baja people, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure some people would agree that it's pretty good, and some people would say it's just mid. Baja Fresh. Mexican Grill. Yeah, so that was the last place I worked. Before that, I worked at Papa John's. Before that, I worked at Pizza Oki, and then before that, I worked at a uh, gym. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Wait, did that you? Was say my, f- that was my first job. Oh, the uh, gym. Really? Well, how old? I was around fourteen, thirteen. R- they hired you? Yeah, they hired oh, me. Wow. Yeah, I only worked like two hours on like the weekends. Oh, what, like what were you doing there? Uh, front desk and like uh, cleaning up. You know, just generator work. <laughs> did uh, you ever have to deal with weirdos? Huh? Did you ever have to deal with like weird people? At his front desk? Uh, no, just people just scanning their things. I That's didn't it. have to really just talk to no one and stuff. Nah. But then going into my first job at Pizza Oki, that was tough. Pizza, I thought you said Pizza Opium. What'd you say? Pizza, pizza- Oki. You know the DJ Stevie Oki? Oh. Do you know yeah, him? So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Stevie so, Oki, yeah. Uh, so he owns the sh- the pizza shop, oh, Pizza really? Oki, yeah. So. Is it one of one or does he have multiple? I think he has multiple, chain? I think uh-huh. he has multiple chains, yeah. But um, I worked pizza there for a while. Oki. Oh, shoot. I have okay. a burn right here. You did? Man, yeah. I, 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 burn. Yeah. I burned my... Uh, I, I took... I was making pizza and then the air... Fryer. <laughs> okay. Homemade pizza? Huh? Homemade pizza? No, no, no. It was, uh, it was Domino's. I was just reheating in the uh, air fryer. Oh, uh, okay. It's, <laughs> okay. What, is that, wait, why'd you... Is that how you got the burn mark? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I was uh, pulling out the pizza. Uh, <laughs> the, those are hot, right? Yeah, see, those I are hot. The, I remember I see my skin that way and it was burning. Wait, let me, right see, let me like see the burn again. Here, put that put that up to the camera. <laughs> he said, maybe, put that up to the camera. Maybe I'll, I'll try to zoom in on that. That's wow, and it it, it looked bad. I mean, when I first got it, yeah, it looked horrible. <laughs> I, and I can't believe they just like let me work that day. Just kept letting <laughs> me keep working. They're just like keep working. Yeah. And then yeah, that that job was actually pretty bad because I remember I was just sixteen. I was still in school, and then they would keep sometimes they would keep me till like two, three in the morning. You Are know? you like, serious? Yeah. <laughs> so that's wait. Okay, but when did you start working? Like sixteen. 15? No, at, no, 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 like the time, the time. Well, like at 7, 5? 7, so like on five, the worst days, it'd five. be like 5 to 2 a.m.? Yeah. That's, is that not illegal? That's not illegal. It's not? Wow. But, I That's, mean, it's America too, like you just said, so it just happens. It happens a lot here, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> Even though it's not supposed to. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then I, just job after job, just trying to. Trying to mm-hmm. do something. Yeah. I was just trying to do something, man. Uh-huh. And that's why, honestly, I'm going to give a big shout out to God uh-huh. for, like, all these opportunities that have been coming my way this this coming up coming year and this, the last of the ending of the year. Like, honestly, just, I don't know, just thank God. Just thank yeah. God for everything, low-key, because, um, you know, like we had just said, sometimes you you, you doubt yourself and things, and, and you just don't know if you're going to actually be where you want to be. But step by step. Everything falls into place. Yeah, you know exactly. You just yeah, gotta keep going. Cause also another thing I think about. Um, I mean, you're only how old are you? I'm 19 right now. 19. Yeah. yeah. So you're not even that much older. It's like, dude, we're still like really young. Yeah, really, like, young, really, really young, young, bro. Really like, young, man. 
there are some people i was thinking about this because like when when like finding like figuring all this stuff out it's always like dang bro like there's so much it's like limitless but then i'm like there's some dude who's like 27 who's also on the same step as me right. and even for them technically it's not too late 27 is still also pretty young. man 30 30 is not too late yeah uh, 35 is not too late and then uh, here we are yeah. both over like a decade early like that's that's you just gotta because some people also like don't come to that realization until later in life yeah maybe they, uh, you always change and uh, time does go by fast man time yeah. does go yeah. by fast and you don't realize it and like my my senior year it just went by so fast and Honestly, I, I did not enjoy school as much as I should have. I did not go to school as much as I should have just because of all the other things I had planned for myself. Always, like, you know, on another, mm. like in another mindset, just trying to make money, I guess. And I don't think money is everything, you know. And I think that's mm. one of the problems, too, that I that I took was that I kind of focused too much in in making money that I didn't kind of enjoy certain cer- certain doing. things or enjoy what I was doing. Working yeah. at Aoki Pizza. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly, working <laughs> at Pizza. And you know, I'm going to tell a funny story and uh, not a funny story, but at the time I was selling stizzies, so I was making enough money for myself, mm-hmm. you know? Like, I had enough money to get myself food for the month. I had enough money to buy myself what I wanted because you're young, you're not paying bills, you know? you know. So, stizzies was paying me i guess what you can say selling stizzies was paying me i guess like a regular part-time you know mm. i was making like around 600 a week you know just selling the stizzies so that was pretty all right money just for doing that as a side hustle so um i had got a girlfriend in 11th grade and i was like damn i need to make more money because i need to take her on nicer <laughs> dates and by the way don't do that to okay. yourself okay. don't don't Try to get a girl and try to give her every money. give her all and don't do that right now. I know a lot of girls and guys are gonna disagree with me on this one, but just don't do it right uh, now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, because we're I, it is not. I'm not saying I'm not blaming her, or blaming myself for anything that went wrong. Because it's just mostly like we're so young that I feel like none of us know really where we what we yeah. really want. Yeah. You know, so no one's fault. It's just you know time just trying to grow up and move on with it and i remember i got the job because of her and burned myself and stuff <laughs> but we here now you know and things kept going um and i feel like all of those things all of those things are good experiences i feel like that's another thing i thank god for i thank god that i went through so much events like heartbreaks like gun to my head jail like so early on so I didn't have no. to like do it later on in life. I was I didn't have to be a hard headed person. I feel like all those things felt like you know, kind of guided me to the yeah. right path. You know that I am at right now. You also, know? like thank God that you learned from yeah, that because exactly. some people, some people like they get arrested once and then it's like they just go back because they don't really yeah they don't really learn. learn. But I don't, I, <laughs> honestly, those twelve hours of being there, I don't know how no one would learn being there. I, I was uh, one hour in there, I was going nuts, bro. Like, <laughs> you press the the suicide yeah, I was button, pressing bro. the suicide button <laughs> trying to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, d- did you ever like break down? Because look, yeah, I, feel I like cried I in there. I cried yeah. in there. I, I'm you know like I I'm would gonna too, hold bro. back. I cried in there because I didn't feel like I deserved it. But one thing about uh, about being in jail though, or like being in there, is that you will find out why you were in there. You know, mm. at the end of the day, I did end up coming to conclusion everything I did wrong, everything yeah. that I was doing wrong. So that's why I think that when I'm going on from that, I kind of wanted to stop selling. You know, around like four months ago after that, I think I stopped mm. selling. You know, it was yeah. one of the big reasons. Other things that had happened too, but you know, like what other things? Uh, getting set up, getting a gun oh, pointed okay. to my head. But so, I'm not gonna get too much no. into details with those, but. Um, it was just a crazy experience, you know, crazy experience, uh, put in a position where you're vulnerable, not able to defend yourself, you know, and it's just scary, you know, scary, especially when you know, you're not in that or you're not even trying to be, you're not even trying to be about that, you know, cause you know, you're just trying to do your thing and you got people just hating for whatever reason or just Mm -hmm. trying to. You know, some people are like, like weird, bro. <laughs> people are bro, weird. Like, it, you get reminded of it, like once yeah. you like go out. I remember, yeah. like one time, I was I was going to Ralph's. I was about to enter, and like some lady like accidentally took like one second longer to to leave, and then, like, <laughs> the, the lady fuck? the lady behind her was like, "Any day now." I was like, "Bro, what are you like?" <laughs> so, yeah. I, I mean, you also just don't know what they're going through. Maybe yeah. like everyone yeah, a bad day. Maybe her though. mom just died. I don't, yeah. I don't, that's why I don't judge either. That's why, like, even though I do think people are weird, I'm not going to judge them because I have no idea what they're going through. And I just don't, you know. It's, it's just better to, to assume, like, the worst 
in my opinion. Right. And then so, yeah, it's better. But yeah. So that was uh, Innovation Media and UGC. Sports consultant. Is that just... So my free telegram right now, Um, I haven't been as consistent with it. Just because... Excuse me. Coffee giving me heartburns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I get heartburns all the time. Yeah. So. I, mean, I, I just had heartburn today, too. Yeah. Like too. It, it sucks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, you're like, he's about today. to throw up. No, no, no. Dude, same thing when we were setting up. It was oh, I was right here. I, I, like, felt it in my chest and then I, was, like, curled up. He thought I was, I was like, about a thousand. <laughs> Thought you were tweaking. Yeah, I was like, nah, bro. I, I think it was just because I ate pizza. I've been I tried pizza for the first time recently. I've been addicted ever since. But nice. um, so uh, oh, you tried. You said you tried pizza for the first time. Yeah, I was in. A, I went to Spain. What the fuck for the first time? Yeah, yeah. So before so, okay, that, okay. I tried it, but I didn't like it. But I don't know what I was on. Okay, because I went to Spain. I went, to, <laughs> I went the there. I tried it, and I was like, "This is okay." The first time I tried new food, it's not like I don't think it's good. I just think it's okay. Honestly, I'm but, the same way. Ah. Yeah. I guess you could say I'm a picky eater. Fuck it, you could say that. I guess you could say that. But I'm just not super picky as I used to be when I was smaller. When I was smaller, like, I wouldn't get, like, tomatoes on my stuff, on my burger. Mm, or, too, yeah. or, I mean, I still don't like pickles. Pickles are disgusting, but. Really? You like I pickles? Love, I just you're, not a, you're not a picky eater, though. I, I, I you're was. Not. <laughs> I, I, pickles are just salty, though. Like, pickles just, are just disgusting. The texture, it's like the, especially when they're all jarred up and then they're like. Take them out. The, uh, uh. the texture, the texture, I kind of get, but like I just imagine it as just extra salt in the burger or something. Like yeah. that's what it tastes. I don't. Okay, so what were you saying? Uh, where were we at? Oh, uh, <laughs> so so I was trying pizza, but then you were bringing up. Um, you were also a picky eater. Oh yeah, uh, I I know. guess yeah, you could say I'm a picky eater because like there's just certain things that I don't like. Like mm -hmm. I I don't like seafood. I only like fried fried seafood. Like I could only eat fried. Fish. You don't like sushi? No, I mean I, I, I tried, tried it. it. Honestly, it's not the Worse, worse. You know, it's, it's not. Weird. It's just a weird. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's yeah. just not like it's enjoyable odd. for me. But like, if I was starving, I'd eat it. Fried shrimp is fire. You like fried my shrimp? shrimp? I've never actually had shrimp. There's You're a lot of food now because I was a picky eater for so much of my life. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, we're kind of similar. Yeah, but I I tried it and um it was it was yeah because I never like it the first time it, but after that is when I I decide like if I get it again I'm like okay yeah this was good and I had it and I was like oh, okay right and then when I came back to America. I was like, let me try, let me try American um, <laughs> pizza, cause over there. Is How different. was Spain, by the way? It was fun, bro. It was amazing. That's one it. of one of my things this year that I. That you want to travel? I want to travel a lot. I think. I want to travel a lot this year. I think it's one of the best investments, cause memories yeah. Is, yeah. is is on on yeah. I remember, um, I read this thing where like in American culture, it's more common to like buy like nice clothes instead of like a plane ticket somewhere compared right. to like in Europe where right. it's different. And yeah, I think I think that's kind of bad. I think it's still nice to enjoy yourself, but also like make memories. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that yeah, I think now it's just so crazy because um, you know, there's so many things you can do. Like mm. you said, there you could go buy new clothes or and and uh, I think like you said, traveling is one of the best things. But it's so crazy. Um, I know this is kind of off topic, but uh, I just thought about it. I just got a plane ticket for like three sixty to Boston. No, so and I've. You know, when I when I hit big on December, I went and I went on myself a little spree on a little shopping spree, you know. And I caught myself a shirt that was 250 So thinking about it, I'm like, damn, it's crazy that there's actually plane tickets that are the same, same as clothes. A shirt, a shirt yeah, bro. A shirt. Like, <laughs> now I think I'm like, damn, so I should have never shirt. purchased that shirt and I should have just, you know. What what what, what, what brand was it? Uh, I think like Stussy or something like that. It's not even a, a brand. That, Is it Stussy or Stussy? St I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it. Yeah. See, I don't even, I just went, bro, and I just, just bought, it. bought, I just bought myself new things that I, that I've never had bought myself yeah. before, you know, so. Uh, there's one thing, uh, like I want to like invest into cameras and all that. Right? Nice. But I oh, do, yeah. if I ever have spare money, I just want to buy myself a Montclair jacket. Uh, oh, nice. That's that's. You want a nice I'll Montclair always, jacket? Yeah, yeah, just just the one. Nice. Just like where? Yeah. I love those, bro. They look They're fly, so bro. They look fly, bro. They look fly. Yeah, yeah. But um, okay. <laughs> that was actually a Stussy store in uh, Spain, and I, the, you, there was only like five people allowed at once. Everything was like what the fuck in Spain? Yeah. Oh shit, that's crazy. Well, not man. dollars, euros. It was like that's actually euros. crazy yeah. that they're out there in Spain. Yeah, yeah. Are they? Are they? I <laughs> let me look them up. Are they European or American? <sighs> that's crazy. It's crazy. I bought this shirt and I don't even know like a single thing about them. Stussy worldwide since 1990. What uh, is? It's Dusty, an American brand. 
Yeah, it is an American brand. Wow. So I don't know how they got over there. Um, but yeah. So you just <laughs> you bought yourself stuff. Yeah, I bought myself. It's because December, bro. It was like, man, like, think about it. You're making somebody's salary, somebody's yearly salary mm. in a month. Like in some. And you've country. never, you've never like touched that type of money before. Mm. So you're just like, fuck, you know, I'm gonna <laughs> spend some of it. Yeah, you know? I saw. But I, I did do a lot of good investments with it. Mm. Like, um, my mom. Uh, she's a private loaner, so she loans people money and uh, she gets interest. So as soon as I got that money, I also did that. I also went and I lent money for interest. Really? Yeah. That's, I feel like so that's kind of scary. You you um put it under like a certain a contract, obviously, where if they don't pay back, you get a possession of theirs, like they're uh, okay. like they like forcefully. Like forcefully. Because I feel like sometimes like some people just like I I I know for don't. some people that might seem messed up, but. It's like uh, it's I it's, think it's, it's fair okay. because yeah. you're you're they're the ones putting themselves on the on the line to get the loan. Mm -hmm. They're the ones agreeing to putting their car down or whatever if if anything goes down, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's just fair. But I send a loan shark but, out there, <laughs> some guy on a horse or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's good because um, I'm a big spender, mm -hmm. so I'm really bad at saving money. So I feel like putting really? my money to and, and like you know loaning and making interest in it is what's like the perfect thing to do for me yeah you know uh your habits when like you don't have anything are the same when you have a lot <laughs> i feel yeah. like that's how i'm kind of worried too is like when i have like nine dollars because <laughs> uh, sometimes like buying like all this stuff and right, uh, right. like sometimes i'm like in the single digits i actually <laughs> here let me show you something i'll put it on screen too <laughs> what are you um, about to show me here i edited it but it wasn't like that far off from reality here where is it like Oh my, twenty eight cents. It was nine dollars and twenty eight cents. My account has been negative before, like negative really? fifty four. Have it's, you ever account has been negative no, before? No, no, no. I made sure it's not negative. Uh, <laughs> like I make sure that. Do they? Cause I don't know. Do they charge you when it goes? Uh, negative? you get like a like a. You see, I've been mad broke. <laughs> You'd uh, get like a uh, negative ten. Like you get like ten dollars taken away. Oh really? Yeah. So oh, I got ten dollar fee for being late. Oh, okay. For not like for having your account on. Uh, do you, you have credit cards? Yeah, I have one credit card. Uh, which is one? Yeah. What is it? The Bank of America credit card. Bank of America. Yeah. Uh, there's like a whole. Like, That's what course. I was gonna tell you. Uh, you had mentioned about your equipment. I was gonna say you should uh, open a credit line. And yeah. Just I buy your equipment with your credit. Oh wait. Yeah, huh? Because that dude just turned eighteen. Yeah, he just turned. How old are you right now? Seventeen. When did you turn eighteen? Uh, October twenty-four. Yeah. So this year, this year, uh, yeah. yeah, this year. Yeah. But in, all the way in October. But yeah, yeah. A while, but you could, you know, you could start getting in the yeah, process by that. Yeah. You know? I've been, I've been researching on credit cards. There's a whole culture about um. Credit card. There's, there's like a, there's like a certain threshold. Okay. You know how like graphs were like you peak, but then after you peak, you start to go back down. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's some people that spend a lot of time on credit cards, and that's helpful because you get a lot of benefits from them. Right. But then there gets to a certain point where they're spending so much time looking into the credit card details and all that, getting new ones and all that, that if they just got like a job, it'll pay more than the value of the benefits that they're getting back. So there's like right. a limit. Because uh, there, I remember um, researching about it. There's like a whole website, and there's this admin. Oh, it's like his whole life is credit. I guess he gets paid from the website now, so at least he's like actually right. making decent money. But you know, I'm assuming he did this without a website before. I feel like that's just so much time to spend on on credit cards. That's like, I don't know. Right. They have like 800 credit scores, but like that's just a lot of time. Like, yeah. So, sports consultants, all that, and then you love hustling. How did you? Let, how did we answer that? What are the types of renovations being made to it right now? Just ideas, looking uh, reflections. New, new drops. The Stone Heart is a big one. Mm -hmm. A, a okay. big one. I, I'm really taking my time on that for, okay. the, for the first drop. Everything. Um. Obviously, the new website is gonna look a lot cleaner. You know, a okay. lot more professional. It, it, yeah. I, I have the. I've actually like you know, being even though like, Shopify you can add a, you can automate your own store. It's automated. You know, you don't have to know no, nothing about coding or anything like that there's still certain things that you, you learn about formats like how, how mm. to like format your website correctly and stuff like that so it's one thing i've kind of picked up on so it's going to be a lot better than the last website yeah yeah i, I remember I, I was messing around with the last website because i don't know if this was like during its whole lifetime but at some point there was like an uzi song playing <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. I we took it out uh yeah Wait, well, i think we yeah, yeah we took it out yeah why just because uh just because it was just like an, it was more like a hype thing in the beginning, but then we just kind of like, <laughs> what, it's, it's, it's like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember. I, I don't know what. I think it was if you entered um, 
one of the one of the, like the sections and then yeah. you exited it out it would it would uh play the song again Did so it'd be I like quick five question. times <laughs> my, my bad so interrupt uh, i have a quick question yeah did you pull up to the gelato menace party the nah, party? when was that because i feel like a lot of 11th graders uh, did. Did. told me that and yeah. i was like man the one thing i did not want was the last that, i mean not in a fucked up way it's just like it's you supposed know, to be seniors. It's supposed to be a senior yeah. party, bro. Like, no, fuck I, off. <laughs> I, know, I know one kid that uh, showed but up. But it's okay, you know. Pull up, you know. They yeah. pull up. Whoever pull up and have fun. You know, that's, I mean, that's what it was for at yeah. the end of the day, so. I, I know one one dude that showed up, and he didn't even go to Polly, and he threw up there. Yeah. He's, um, well, at the time. A lot of people threw up there, man. It was a mess. Like, it was a night. Uh, it was a you, mess. Who cleaned? We or, didn't have to clean. Oh, we just got kicked bathroom? out. We oh, you got, got kicked out? Well, yeah, we got kicked out of the Airbnb. We lost the deposit, you know. We uh, it was just horrible. I mean, what? our plan was to throw the party, obviously, but sleep there, and then the next morning clean up, you know, or mm-hmm. whatever. But I mean, I, in a way, I'm glad it also happened because we didn't have to stay the next day uh, and clean wait. up. Who 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 kicked you out? I don't. How does the, that work? The the host of the the house? Airbnb. Oh yeah. wait, they stay there while. No 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 no. Uh, they leave, but they have cameras in their house, so oh. they know what's going on. You know, they know what's going on in the house. You told them you were gonna have a party. Yeah, I told them we were gonna have a party, but. Uh, we kind of like lied, you know. We said we we're gonna have a, a birthday party, a oh. birthday party for a friend, and there was only gonna be like forty people. <laughs> <laughs> How many were there? Was I it? I think it was over. Like, if I think it, the security told us there was like over two hundred or over one hundred fifty. Yeah. Jesus. Who who were the secu- were they professional or it was, was just it one security guard? But uh, I guess you can consider him professional. Yeah. Did but, you pay him? Uh, uh, yeah, I paid him. Okay. Yeah. And. So it wasn't Shout out to my dollar security by the way how, how um How did you have to get in Like what, Did huh? you just go up to him And say Yo let me in Or did you have to have Like a senior friend What do you mean Like how did we get the Airbnb how, No how did you get Like how How does someone get Into that party Since Uh no, no You just had So I think the reason Also why we messed up On why there was Is because we did You couldn't have Seniors come Any poly senior But you, they have they could bring two guests with them. Two. Yeah, we. And I fucked up because my home, my homie Joshua, he had said, only do one guest, only have allow them to bring one guest. But uh-huh. I was like, but that's not enough people. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let them bring two guests yeah. with them, you know. <laughs> so we allowed two guests, and then a lot of people just started coming in. I mean, it was what I expected. The way the way we planned, it, the way we organized it, it was so well. So it was just. No, we knew it was gonna be yeah. a big party. You, you said you lost a deposit. How did so you have to put in a deposit? You have to put in a deposit, and if you didn't wreck the house, you get the uh, deposit back. But we, yeah, the house got completely what was wrecked. The, what, what was the deposit? It was like a thousand dollar deposit. Mm, yeah. But did you guys split? How many? How many hosts were there? There four? was like four or six, but four or six. most of the money came from me and Joshua. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. Was Audi on a host? Yeah, yeah, okay. They, they, and then um, not just to, and I didn't say that to discredit anybody. Yeah, by yeah, the way, I, I, Ariane also put in uh, some money. You know, mm-hmm. all the hosts also put in some yeah. money. You know, but it was like most majority, most yeah, majority, like yeah. Berkshire Hathaway yeah. owning. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. Um. Yeah. Do you uh, do you care about stocks? Like. Mm, so, right now that I've been dominating in sports betting, a lot of people that do stocks and have actually told me that I would enjoy stocks and to get into trading, but I don't, I don't like really want to get into it's it. It's a numbers game. It's a, it's you a numbers game. Read. It's a head game. Yeah. Um, man, it's hard work. <laughs> <laughs> was the coffee strong or not? Nah? It was a good coffee. Thank right, you, by the way. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I would kind of, I, I know this might sound crazy to some people, but I would kind of compare it to sports betting stocks. It, it is. Because it's risk management. Mm-hmm. And that's what sports betting is too. It's risk being management. Being able to work under like pressure. Yeah. Like if you just lose a thousand, yeah. you gotta like you gotta still be able be in to the right mindset. Mindset to yeah. go and make more, you know? Yeah, like or else you'll lose more. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's just how it is and stuff. But maybe in the future, you know, maybe in the future get the right information as well. Get into mm. stocks as well. Right now I'm uh getting into Amazon FBA. Um uh, Amazon what? FBA. I'm FBA? I'm in a course right now. Uh, what, what is that? What's up? What what is that? Amazon FBA? Yeah. Uh, Amazon fulfilled fulf- uh, well FBA just stands for fulfilled by Amazon so it's like um, you buy like let's say wholesale from Kirtland like I go and mm-hmm. I contact Kirtland and I get wholesale uh, get a wholesale like case of waters from them then um, I send it over to Amazon and then I get my sales from Amazon that's basically what it is there's FBM too where you could fulfill the orders by your own like on your own house but uh-huh. and I've heard there's actually more profits in uh, selling it from your own house, but thinking about it, 
Amazon, Amazon might take a 15% cut from Amazon FBA, from whatever you make. But they're using their warehouse. They're using their workers to pack out your stuff. And their website. They're using their cars, you know, which is gas. So they're using a whole bunch of stuff. So that 15 you're paying like, what, what, that 15% is worth your money. I might uh, sell those cases of water then. <laughs> oh, you got a whole shit ton. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> they're, they're not... Well, last time I checked, they were like six dollars, which isn't that bad. That's pretty good, I think. Yeah. yeah. And then the Amazon app, you could just actually go to any of your convenience store, like Costco and stuff like that. And you could just go scanning around products and seeing what product is uh, profitable. But um, I think that that method has kind of died out. But um, there's still a lot of ways to make money on Amazon. You, uh, you know, something smart would be like finding these methods in the first place, because a lot of the things like drop shipping, um, and like stuff like that along that line. I felt so hard at dropshipping, bro. It's crazy. Because it, it, it just gets saturated really fast. Yeah. Being a Twitch streamer, being a podcaster, yeah. it's just, it's hard, but, you know, I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to start, you know, this, this is big, bro. Episode 10. I mean, yeah. like, I'm happy that we're able to uh, get this far. We did miss, I think, two weeks now? Yeah. I think I missed two weeks, but um, I learned a lot from it. Where this is the first time we're gonna have a proper schedule because before nice. it was just like I would hit them up and then we try to like set up a day like what, what, what right, we did, we did. Yeah. but but from now on we kind of agreed we're just gonna do Saturdays. Oh, so um, every so Saturday he's gonna, he's gonna drop the camera off Friday. Man, I, I do my thing. He on has the weekend. a pre- uh, really good setup. Yeah, he has a good setup. His camera is amazing. Yeah, it's um he uses it for a lot. He said he was telling me the other day how you know iPhones have uh, really good cameras too. The new he one said, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said that like because he films real estate for um for like the people that own the houses. Right. Uh, so he gets paid uh, like four thousand. Um, he should get into closing deals. Yeah. Real estate deals. Yeah. There's uh ways to wholesale. I mean, I'm pretty sure he knows about it, or I'm pretty sure you've heard about it, where you don't have to go in and, and actually use any money you can go and just find somebody that's willing to sell their house for a certain amount and then if you say you get it for like get them to sell the house for a hundred thousand then you go to an but you obviously the big i think the big thing is networking too you know networking is the most important thing because yeah so if you would have somebody that like uh somebody that can go and take up on that deal and they go and they get it and they go buy it for you know, less they could get a profit from just middlemaning that deal. Do you get what I'm saying? You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's good money. Middlemaning is middlemaning. Middle middlemaning exactly. Yeah, it always works. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But maybe he knows about that. If not, I'll just send him this yeah. part of. The- <laughs> he sent him this part yeah. of the footage. No, but yeah. yeah, it's dope. Real estate is dope. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he did say though that like he also likes to invest in like cameras too because it. Oh, I'm, a lot of these people, like some of the older clients, he said like. They they still kind of underestimate phones. He said if he really tried, uh, he could um, film the stuff on. Get the iPhone. settings right on the iPhone. Yeah, I yeah. believe it. I believe yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, have you seen? Uh, Apple has a series called Shot on iPhone. They just released one with because uh, you know how they sponsored the Super Bowl halftime right, show. Right. They they released like a behind the scenes of the like uh, rec- process of everything, and it was a shot on iPhone thing, which means the whole thing was recorded on oh, iPhone. Oh shit! And it was that's really crazy. good. Yeah, but he crazy. said that he said that a lot of these older clients underestimate that. So if you pull up with a phone, even if you have every setting perfect, they're not gonna <laughs> they're not gonna take you serious. Yeah, compared to like having an actual proper camera. Yeah, obviously the camera's still better. Um, but like the, the, the phone could get pretty far. The phone could do it. The yeah, phone could it's, do it. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where like, if you really wanted to, you could like, especially in the modern day, like, dude, you have just so much, like a phone is so powerful. It hurts you a lot, but it, you have to take that hurt and t- turn it into right. a producer. Yeah. If you're wasting your time on TikToks, then you start making the TikToks. Right. You feel me? Right. That's just, that's the mentality I grew. Um, I stopped making TikToks though. And yes, start again. It's bad. <laughs> I'm happy I'm a, I, I'm happy I have the footage this time though, because normally he just takes it home and I have to rely on him and he's a he's a busy. Yeah, he so said, he, he, yeah. He took us on a long tour. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. He said one of his goals is to just uh he was supposed to be a super senior, which he was mad at. He fixed that, so now he's not going unless he he fails his classes. <laughs> but you know, school takes up a lot of time, dude. And like it's like he just wants to get out. But, like he wants to finish school and I, and I was kinda stuff. disappointed in my senior year. Because my senior year, I kind of had, I only needed one class, which is my English class. All other classes were elective. Like, all my three classes, my first three periods were, were all electives. And there were classes that I already had took. So I just really didn't want to show up. I just wouldn't show up. Three <laughs> electives? Wow. Yeah, I had. Well, I don't know if the other one was considered elective, but I had 
My first was engineering. Yeah, I okay. think that was an elective. That's an elective, yeah. My second one was music. And then my third was... Elective. No, my second was art. And my third was music. And then my fourth was English. So, yeah. So, my year was kind of like... I, didn't, I felt... I just had felt like I didn't have to show up. Even though I did, but, who, you know. Who do you live with? I live with my grandparents. Grandparents? Yeah. They didn't care that you just didn't show up? They would. They would always tell me, oh, you're not going to graduate. You're not going to graduate. <laughs> and I, at some point, honestly, I did feel like I wasn't, but... <laughs> I did. You, you I graduated on stage. Up, I was in that motherfucker. I was yeah, raised it high and shit. <laughs> I got out, man. I'm out of that. Even though, uh, props to all the kids that went to good colleges, or even props to all the kids that went to just regular colleges. You know, props to education. Education is not something to neglect. You know, uh -huh. yeah, it's not something to neglect important. at all. The more you learn, the more you learn that there's more to learn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Life is all about learning, dude. Yeah, yeah man. Just gotta be. Just gotta. Learning is amazing. Do you yeah. do you learn any languages? I do not. I do not learn any languages, but that would be that would be actually really cool. Yeah, what about it. you? <laughs> I'm like I'm learning more Spanish. Yeah. I just started. Are watching you are you a Hispanic, bro? Yeah. Why? Well, why? No, why? Why? More like more like oh, okay, more okay. like like proper. Like I'm talking to the. No, to but the no, ju no judgment at all. But just yeah, why? Yeah. Why? why uh, did your parents not kind of no, speak? No, no, they did. But you know, it's like more basic, like asking for food and like like oh, okay. regular like everyday stuff. Where I'm starting to learn more grammar, like grammatical things. I'm taking Spanish too in school, but I'm also right. uh, talking with um like kids that only speak. Well, they know like, they know English, but it's very like limited. My my mom went to college. Angel <laughs> Tomate. <Shout out. laughs> yeah, you, you don't have a bad accent. No, you don't have an accent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My um. Uh, Mom went to college and she w took a Spanish class in college, and she says that proper Spanish is actually one of the most hardest things. Yeah. I mean, not hard, but, but it's so just like there's a lot of things that are proper in Spanish yeah. that you, like we don't accent. know that's proper because we, you know, I kind of accentos. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, exact, yeah. Uh, exactly. Um, that's what I'm learning. That's one of the things I'm learning yeah. right now. That's like, yeah, that's accent. Uh, that, yeah, but yeah, uh, Spanish actually was my first language. Yeah. It, it was mine too, but it oh. quickly became like, because like, <laughs> it's your first language for the first two and a half years, and then you go to kindergarten and everyone speaks and English. Everyone's speaking like, English yeah, in this. Like, it's lit. I mean, it's also, it's low key like a blessing. Have you been to Mexico? Yeah. Yeah. What part? Uh, San Luis Potosi. San Luis? Yeah, San Luis. Nice. Yeah. Where, where are you? I, well, my, my mom's Guatemalan and my dad's Mexican. Uh -huh. And, um, uh, my dad was from Guerrero, but I've never been out there to Guerrero. I've only been to Tijuana and like Cancun in Mexico. You've been to Cancun? Yeah. I've never been to the Cancun is pretty nice. I've never been I've been to On my eighteenth birthday. 18th. Uh I went to TJ with my friend. Just like me and my me and my boy. Just me and him, we took a road trip, we went. It. And we landed in TJ. And it was just wild. How's it? How's it like? Oh, you you flew there? No, nah, oh, like we just drove because uh, TJ's two hours away. Yeah, so yeah. we just decided, like, damn, let's just grab our stuff, let's just drive, and then let's just drive out there and see what happens. <laughs> you, you didn't have a plan? Uh, we didn't have a plan. We just went because over there, when you're, you're 18 over there, you're like 21, so you can go inside a club. You can go. In, you, you can basically do anything you want. Mm. So we went. We just entered a random hotel that night and just went out to party for our birthdays. And, Came back and that's it. Yeah, surprised we made it back alive, <laughs> <laughs> or like without getting robbed because uh -huh. people always get robbed out there by the yeah. cops. Yeah. By the co oh yeah, yeah yeah they're they're pretty corrupt. I'm not gonna lie yeah. to you. You need to start paying them. Yeah, it's still it's still a pretty rich country compared to a lot of others though. Yeah, and things are moving. Like st I remember while looking up Stussy. Stussy is made in Mexico. Oh, that's crazy, yeah, man! Like what a the lot of stuff fuck? Is, it's, it's a lot of stuff is made in Mexico now. Yeah. A lot. What was there was something else? Where my mom's from? It's a a really small town, like really? a really small bit, like less than a thousand people. Really? Yeah. I think I think that's the same thing with my uh, yeah. What's your my parents? Yeah, they're from like a like a random ranch. Well, the ranch. Yeah. Those are the best places to visit. They're pretty yeah. cool. Like I've been out there, and it's just different. But, yeah. You 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 learn that there's so much things that you take for granted, like. Mm. Um, Right. Hot showers, Wi-Fi, wi wi music, you know, like just so many things that you take for granted on your day, everyday daily basis that you don't realize how blessed you are until you yeah. go out there and you see how people are actually living. People still don't have shoes over there, you know. Yeah. There's some parts that well, don't have light, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, the funny part about where my parents are from is that the, the more people from there that come here to America, right. they get money here, or whether it be construction, most of the yeah. time it's construction, <laughs> construction, which is pretty decent money, right? right. Especially when you're, like, you're single and you don't have kids. And so they send back money to, to their family over yeah, there. And there. so That's now they're happens. like starting to get rich too. And they have like iPhones. And what all I, that. W part of my job as an insurance broker, um, mm -hmm. 
because my mom has a two offices, right? One in LA and one in Arlita, and I'm working in the one in Arlita. We don't just do insurance, but we also do money transfers, like money wire transfers. Mm. So, like exactly what you're saying, we get a lot of those all the time. Mm. You know, just constant money. people just sending money over there, and they send a lot of money. Like yeah. they'll send like there's times where guys are sending like ten thousand dollars a month. You know, wow, wow. Yeah. yeah, over there. You know, to build houses for their people. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's they're working. It, they're working so hard. You know, they're just working day in and day out. Uh-huh. Day in and out. Just. How do how does wiring work? Like, why is it called wiring? And I'm not sure the whole why it's called wiring, but it's just like a company, and you get obviously your you set it up with the company, you know, set up a contract with the company, and uh, you just get their information, the bank information from whether, and you just send it from here. You just have to use uh, an ID, mm. the ID of the person who's sending it, and then just the information of who's receiving it over there. Simple, but it it gets moved. Like, being in, like, the uh, insurance business, you are, uh, like, around finance and stuff, you get to see how, like, money moves around. Money moves around all the time. Yeah. Money's moving around all the time. And sometimes uh, we think, like, damn, why do we have to think about money so much? But it's just because it's just around us and everything. It's just in everything. Especially this, here, This yeah. might cost money, you know? This yeah, might cost money. You know, if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for money, it wouldn't. It wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't be here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, money is old, too. Like, yeah. we realize that quick that we need to trade for, like, things. We can't just mm-hmm. give things out for free. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I already asked all these things, so I was gonna. Oh, give me. Should I should I host the uh, senior? So yours was the Gelato Madness party. Mine's about to be the Chompy Show. Okay. Party, bro. Oh yeah, I'm hell a, yeah. I'm a, hey, hey. <laughs> that, man. hell yeah, it's gonna be lit. <laughs> how how much did the did the Airbnb cost? Like, just you, if you want to throw a party like that, you're gonna need around like three grand. Three grand. Three grand or a little more. Okay, so, but if I get, like, a group of 10 people, that's 300 a person, Yeah, if they're willing to. Yeah, if they're willing to, but I'm, out of my experience, a no. lot of people are not going to, but don't put more than, like, $200 in. That's not, well, I'll just get, like, 20 people there. I, I, I honestly, that was my idea. <laughs> that was, like, uh, I was, like, I'm going to just get a bunch of people to pitch in a bunch of money, and it's going to flow right, but then I'm also going to end up coming out of our pocket. But it's all good, because uh, how we've seen it is we had something... In our mind, we had a vision of how it was going to go down, and mm. we executed that vision. Mm. We literally, you know, exactly how we pictured the party to be, exactly how we wanted everything to flow, except obviously for the cops coming and breaking in. I was getting kicked out. That, that wasn't as planned, but... Oh, so I mean? the cops came? Yeah, the cops came. Uh, yeah. We got shut down. And then, that's then, the, they... then the host started getting mad, and then he came in. He just or so, oh, do they check the cameras, like, all the time? I don't think all the time, but he just said, like, oh, what the fuck is going on in there? <laughs> <laughs> He called and he said, what the fuck is going on in there? And we're like, hey, don't worry about it. We're like, you're going to come tomorrow morning. We're going to close all the doors so there's no noise. So there, I don't, if anyone remembers during the party, there was a point where we wanted to get everybody inside. And we wanted mm-hmm. to shut all the doors because the house, he had told us, the house is soundproof. So as long as we have all the doors closed, we could blast music and it won't go out to the neighbors mm-hmm. because of the soundproof house. So we're like, damn, like. So when we got on the phone, like, no worries, we're not, nothing's going to happen. We're just going to get the people in. We're just going to close the doors. Mm-hmm. So we try to do that. But then when we try to do that, I don't, I don't know. It was just chaos. It's just people yeah. outside, people just not listening, you know. Yeah. People were, like, by the construction side where they, were, <laughs> they couldn't get out because of how drunk they were, you know. Like, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, you know. Um, So... At that point, we're like, yeah, we're probably going to get the cops called on us. And the cops mm-hmm. ended up coming. And then that's when the Airbnb owner got mad and he just kicked us the fuck oh, out. He, how, how do you know the cops are there? He seen through the cameras. Oh, okay. But so he, yeah. he checked pretty consistently. Yeah, pretty consistently, I guess, yeah. But at some point, we kind of, like, had him already, like, fuck off, you know? We t- told him, like, all right, it's going to be okay, you know? Just We're just going to close the doors. But tomorrow, we'll clean up and it's going to be all right, you know? Mm-hmm. But, no. <laughs> I think where we messed up. Uh, it could have lasted a lot longer it's just like less people like I said I think yeah. I messed up by well, saying two people, guests yeah. I think just one I think even just seniors I should have just said just seniors just seniors just seniors or just had like 20 security guards and like yeah. whip everybody <laughs> <laughs> like the battering room yeah. in the house <laughs> I don't know if I were to if I were to do that then I'd, I'd just have like multiple security guards yeah just, like I, that was better multiple security but guards. then that's a lot of money yeah I mean like you said that's a, that's a huge it's, gonna, it's just gonna be a lot of money spent and what do you get from that and you don't get nothing from it you just just get uh, like i guess like fucking a little bit a of like attention. A, a t- not even attention but just like a little bit of fun 
fun and stuff and fucking people are like yo what's I, good? yeah what's Appreciate good and stuff that. like that and that's one thing i've learned is people don't give you a round of applause when you have an idea they give you a round of applause when your idea starts working mm-hmm. you yeah. know so yeah, like they call you insane until yeah like, yeah exactly yeah. so i remember like even like with the betting a lot of people thought i was crazy a lot of people think i was a gambling addict or something in like the first <laughs> month but i went and i i i won multiple times you know i went one multiple times and it came through you know fucking um but yeah if you are gonna decide to throw it honestly you're only gonna be in high school once so just fucking i, I put my like YOLO sponsorship it. oh i guess i'm gonna sponsor it like yeah. I, and i like guess that's I, what I, another thing we wanted to do too, was kind of sponsor our name out you know yeah yeah gelato we had the gelato madness, madness juice be honest, though, we had the gelato okay. madness juice and stuff. really yeah. i didn't even know. i just heard it as it as the party the graduation like, party yeah of course you know uh, for me, yeah, I just have it. You know how like it's like oh the super uh, the yeah. halftime show brought to you by yeah. Apple. Yeah, <laughs> or I'm a, I'm gonna reach out to like, <laughs> halftime show brought to you by Apple. <laughs> I'm gonna reach oh, yeah. out to like some some like uh, juice brand or you know vodka brand and be like yo. But yeah, I mean, when if you ever decide to throw it, and need some help with anything. I mean, hit me up, bro. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to Boston March third, March first to March fourth, and it's crazy. I'm just literally flying out just to go watch a basketball game. Really? Yeah, I'm going out just to go watch Celtics and Warriors. Why? Because that's my job now, bro. I oh. watch sports, so I just I'm gonna go that's in, just, I'm gonna go put in some money on the game, and I'm gonna come back with more money. My flight ticket was paid off by sports betting, so mm. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna play off, pay off probably. I mean, I'm not saying because I know there's risk in this, so you know I'm not gonna say like oh my, just win, 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 you know. But with the with the right amount of management in this, you you won't lose. I mean, you won't. It's not saying you won't lose at all. But you just won't lose how other people lose, you know. You'll yeah. just make consistent money, like, and be able to cash out. Then your next loss won't affect you because you're already up like seven hundred or already up a thousand. Yeah, know? that's what like some dude in the. I went to go watch the Super Bowl with my friend, like at his cousin's house, and like that guy put down like six bets, and then like he, he I think the first one like caused him to, to just be set. I think one of them, I don't know if he was the one that put it, but someone put down the zero point first quarter and they got like a thousand dollars. It's funny. One bet can actually set you up uh-huh. and like, it just sets you up. Yeah. And then you're just good. You and know? you're good. You know, you're not really losing anymore. Uh-huh. Like that's how it was for me in December, but I mean, December, sorry, uh, October when I won my first big bet, but then I kind of just spend it low key, you know, mm. I, I low key spend it, you know, yeah. on what? courses the courses mm, and yeah. then uh just for my st- regular stuff on myself like just my daily my daily life going out there, i guess yeah. um and i j- it's just like every day as you meet new people around this industry too like right now i'm talking to other people that are more involved in it you learn more and more things you know like there's somebody that i know personally not not personally but like you know that i met that i've talked to text yeah. um that has made over 100k and he has never betted over 200 dollars. really yeah wow so That's do you get what I'm saying? So there's how long like, it, that gives you an, an idea of like if you ha- like what I just said, money management. Money management is the only way you're gonna be able to survive in sports betting. Having that money management and there's this thing called hedging. The uh, hedging is like crazy because you're basically betting on both teams that are playing the same night. And you're not losing a single dollar no matter who wins. But it's done in a very specific way. It's not always like, you can't always do it. It's the, like, say you go and there's a uh, Lakers versus Clippers. Lakers are negative 150. I don't know if you've seen that in the sports books, how they're like negative odds and no, stuff like that. No. Oh, but it's just a thing in sports yeah. books where well, they're negative odds. But that's just uh, determines what your payout is going to be. So there's a pick for negative 150. You put $100, say, to 160, right? So you have $100 to win 60 on, on Lakers before the game starts. Let's say the game starts, and then the odds before that on the Clippers were like at 210, plus 210. And basically, when you see a plus sign, plus 210, basically what that means is times two. Okay. So anytime you see plus five, plus 500, that just basically means times five your money. So say at some point, Lakers are up um, like by 15 points. And then this is sports betting. So sports betting, if you know, everyone in a while sports, you'll know that anything could go left, you know? They might be up by 15, but then next half, they could be losing or they could be mm-hmm. tied. So what you go do, since at that point, you have $100 to win $60. At that point, what you do is you go and you bet on the other team because now the other team, since they're down, 
they have odds of like plus 500 or plus 600, right? So you go and you put $20 and that $20 is going to be into 120. So if you subtract, if you do the math, $20 minus $40, that you, I mean, minus 60 that you're going to win on the other game. That would, if the other, if Lakers win, that would be 40 profit. Mm -hmm. If the other team wins, you take yeah. 20 profit. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you ended up hedging up. Yeah, so that's wow. a, it's a, it's like a, a, a certain time Specific where scenario. you can, where you can protect your play. Okay. And once you do that, you're not losing any money. Mm. And you could do that with a thousand dollars to five hundred, so you can make five hundred profits, money. confirmed money. Exactly. So it's it, a lot of things that people don't know, but there's yeah. those just things available in sports betting. Does this happen in like every game or a happens a lot, a lot? So I can say that it'll happen like a cool like sixty percent. The only time you can't catch a hedge is if the whole game it's it's kind of evened out, mm. oh. or or if the other team is just winning your play uh -huh. your team, then you like can't hedge because the odds are different. The odds yeah. didn't go higher on the other team. The odds just lowered for yours. Mm. So I get that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it's a little confusing, but like yeah, you, yeah. But you kind of you know you kind of get the idea of it. Yeah, I mean you you've changed my opinion on the whole sports betting thing because before I used to always see it as a like what people were telling you like a whole gambling thing, right? Like being a gambling addict. That's right. that's how I saw. I've always said like, oh, I took out the mortgage <laughs> to <laughs> yeah to bet on the Super Bowl, yeah. or my wife is leaving me stuff like that. But yeah, I mean thinking about it, yeah, uh, you could always play smart. Yeah. I just think the problem is that. It's very, it's um, addicting. Th that that, but I feel like it's a lot of people don't really pick up the information, the right information. Okay, that too. How do I word this? It's it reaches like into our instincts of like okay, uh, like high risk, high reward, right? Which is something like we want to chase, right? Mm -hmm. And so some people don't realize how susceptible they are to this until they're betting money, and then mm -hmm. that's when they go overboard, yeah. and so, it's like a loop. Yeah. So one thing that people have to understand, even though people kind of compare it to stocks and stuff, with stocks, it'll keep going. So if you drop, you have chances of maybe it going up again. Like in twenty years, yeah. Yeah, 10, exactly. Five, yeah. But with with um, sports betting, once the game's over, you either won or you lost. So you got to always have in mind that there's a lot of risk into it. So your man your management always has to be on point. Like you have to know how much you're betting per unit. Never. Uh, one rule that I use, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people use it, that they never bet more than 20% of their bankroll. So let's say I have, or maybe I'll, sometimes maybe I'll lose a little more. Like say I have 200 on my account. I'll only use for that day, I'll only use about like a hundred or fifty dollars. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So if I lose that, I'm still relying on all. as other people they have two hundred, they would just go and slam that on one play. Yeah. You know? It's a lot like a credit card. You just yeah. don't really wanna You don't wanna spend more money than yeah. you can actually afford than you to can actually afford yeah, to yeah, lose. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah, and, and also that always have make sure that you're never betting it's your last hundred dollar bill, you should be you shouldn't be sports betting. You're that, struggling yeah, to pay some bills, you shouldn't be sports betting. That's yeah. that's when people get like yeah. into the trail. I remember seeing videos of oh, yeah. like, oh my, uh, the money my mom gave me for <laughs> for rent. Yeah, those videos are sad. <laughs> that's though. Like, sad, man. They're like in their car. They're like shaking. Yeah. But like, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you play it smart, it's just weird. It's like recommending someone yeah. to, because it, it, in a way, it's I think it's one of or the only like gambling, uh, one of or the only addiction that isn't um a substance. All right. So it's kind of like if you recommended someone alcohol, like yo, yeah. you know, try this. It's like fun. Yeah, and, it, and it, there's a chance that they end up becoming an alcoholic. It, it's it sucks because, believe it or not, I feel like I have influenced a couple of people mm. to like start sports yeah. betting, and you're lucky influencing me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I they those people don't understand the certain type of knowledge and work I kind of had to like pick up. To actually like reading courses, yeah, all of that, like hour, two hour courses, or like fucking so many information into it to actually kind of be consistent with it that they just think that it's gonna be all right. I'm gonna just put a couple of picks in and I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna be all right, you know. But it's, it's a lot more like how I just play it, learning hedging, you know, learning hedging, learning management, learning so many things, you know, throughout every day, even about teams that you have to stay mm -hmm. consistent on a daily basis. And if not, if you just think like, oh, I'm gonna just put picks in and I'm done. Then you're you're just gonna like you're just gonna lose. You know. Yeah. So you got it. Like everything, you just have to do research or else. Yeah. Or, you gotta know what you're getting yourself on, into. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like in the beginning, I'm gonna say that I was blessed for getting the the correct guidance mm -hmm. and not just getting into it like just like on my own. You yeah. know.
Do you think you could start on your own, or would no. that just no, 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 no right. one could start on their own. I'm not. Well, actually, uh, I guess if you're like a sports freak and you just you know know, everything. know everything about <laughs> sports and you're just like that, and I guess you can. But even then, you still have to learn a lot of thing about these books mm. that a lot of people don't know. You know, like yeah. about these you know apps that certain things on why certain lines were placed like that. You have to. A lot of I uh, guess seventy percent of it is analogy, and then the other thirty percent is research. So, so now part of like your everyday um, routine would be watching these games. It's crazy. It's mostly line re- line reading, because you know how I explained to you on 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 the apps. There's negative one fifty, negative two plus two two hundred. Yeah. Those are the uh, those are line odds that the teams have. So line reading. It's one of the most things that I do. More, more than watch games, I actually don't watch as much sports as you would think, you know? Mm. I actually okay. not watching the games, like, as much, you know? I watch one game that I really like, you know, throughout the day or, like, two, you know? Mm. But I'm not really watching the games. I'm mostly reading information and uh, line reading. Okay. I have, a, I think, an 80% hit rate on tennis, and I've never watched a single game of tennis. <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> So if that, that might sound crazy to a lot of people, yeah. but I feel like like there's times where I'll go like nine nine wins, two losses on tennis, and I've never like watched a single match of tennis. Nine wins two. It's just all line reading. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, we're getting to the last minute of the hour and thirty. The camera looks yeah, it's still on. I'm kind of scared that <laughs> it'll turn off though. So if you want, we could uh, just finish up now. Yep. Are there is there anything promote anything you want? Hopefully you don't disable your Instagram account. No, I mean, out. not promote anything. Just shout out Gelato Madness, you know. Yeah. Shout out Sports Betting. Shout out Go Sports. And thank you for having me. I appreciate it, bro. Nice it was you, a bro. very good nice guest. Meeting. Amazing. You were yeah. a lot more, um like, sometimes I'm scared. Like, right. when, I, when I don't really know these people before, right. if they're going to... Be outgoing and speak. Yeah, speak. or, like, speak on their, like, you know, uh, you experiences. Know, you know, I'm going to be honest. Um... I do have social anxiety, so sometimes, I don't know if you might notice, I might get stuttered on my own words or something mm, like that. Yeah. I might be like, uh, 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 uh-huh. you know, but I have, have improved a lot, you know. That's good. And, yeah. and it has improved, I think, just because of my confidence and so many things that I have done, you know, mm-hmm. been through that. I just makes me comfortable when speaking yeah. to anyone, you know, like go in a room with the president. I'll have a normal yeah. conversation with him, yeah. you know, like. I might stutter a bit, but he's going to he's gonna yeah. understand what I'm yeah, trying to say. Yeah. He's going to get my point, <laughs> you know. Hey. I'm proud of you for that, bro. Hey. Appreciate it, bro. So, we're um. Shout out Gelato Man. And shout out to anyone for with uh yeah. social anxiety or anyone yeah, man. suffering like, with any real. type of depression or something. I've never suffered depression, but I've heard that uh. It gets bad. It gets bad for people, yeah. you know. So, shout out to those people and yeah, man. you know. Shout out to everyone. Shout out to everyone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, shout out to the Chompley Show, man. Yeah, the best, yeah, the best it, podcast in Sun Valley, it. man. Come on, let's <laughs> turn up. <laughs> All right, right, well, um, that's it. Thank you. If you made it to this, oh look, my alarm. If you made it to this, yeah. If you made it to this point, bro, thank you. Truly, there's some people I always see. It's always like 10 percent of viewers, bro. But that's that's just so lit. Thank you for for making it to the end. And have a well for us. It's night, but have beautiful day. Thank you. Love you. All right. Thank you, bro. Hey, thank you for having me, bro. Three, two, just...